Good afternoon. I am Richard Fraser, Chairman of St Helens and Knowsley Teaching Hospitals, NHS Trust. This is our Trust's 30th annual general meeting and as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it is being broadcast to you via the Trust's website. Last year's AGM was also held in the same way, broadcast on the 20th of September 2020. It is still available to watch online and so, because of that, there are no formal minutes that need to be approved. Now that official bit is out of the way, I would like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us in these extraordinary times. In a moment, Anne Ma, our Chief Executive, will introduce her review of the year 2020 to 2021. But first, let's hear from some of our incredible staff. In 2020, everything changed. It was unprecedented. Daunting. Emotional. Exhausting. Frightening. Yet, we all pulled together. We looked out for each other. Lent on each other and learnt new ways to meet each other. My workmates were my family. She was always just there for me to talk to. We just stuck together through it all. I've never felt prouder to work for the NHS. To stand alongside my colleagues. What a team. Team STHK. And I am proud of each and every member of Team STHK. I'll talk more about that later. Hello, I'm Anne Marr, Chief Executive of St Helens and Notley Teaching Hospitals, NHS Trust. I'm pleased to be presenting this year's annual general meeting. Who would have thought that 12 months on from our last AGM, we would still be unable to meet in person? The COVID pandemic has changed many things here at the Trust, as it has for the whole of the NHS. Dealing with the pandemic has impacted on every aspect of our organisation, which is evident in my review of the Trust's activity and performance from April 2020 to March 2021. The year began like no other we've known. The country went into lockdown, and whilst COVID numbers in the hospital were low, they were rising rapidly. And we had to work differently, like every NHS trust. There will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope, because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. When we knew the pandemic was on its way, we had to free up as much of the bed base to accommodate the COVID admissions. We had to change how we operated in the hospital, how we managed our services. Naturally, we had to think about the way that we delivered those services to make sure patients not only stayed safe, but continued to receive treatment. There was elements of the elective programme that we were asked to cancel on a national basis, and therefore, we saw our activity that we would normally deliver reduce, and the performance alongside that. Quality is about good care and whilst it's something we talk about as being essential, it is something that we can measure. It is the outcomes of our patients, it's how well they recover, it's how often we will cure them. When we measure it, we can understand it and we can improve our services to respond to that measurement. So in the last year we reported one MRSA case and in addition we reported a second case which was a result of a delayed test. When a patient is admitted to hospital with symptoms, we have a 48 hour period to take that blood sample. If it's taken outside of this period of time and comes back positive, then that is classed as hospital attributable rather than community and that's what happened in this case. 
the Department of Health set a trajectory for each organisation. For this trust, that was no more than 48 cases. The trust reported 28 cases which was below our trajectory. Like all hospitals, we have been required to report on the number of hospital-acquired COVID infections. This trust has the lowest rate of hospital-acquired COVID infections in Cheshire and Merseyside. Another event is when we make a mistake that could have been avoided. Unfortunately, the trust reported three never events in the last year. One was related to when a patient was administered medication that should have been given orally and it was given intravenously. And the other two cases were related to nerve block injections which were given in theatre. Unfortunately, they were given on the wrong side of the patient. Most importantly, the patients came to no harm and they made a full recovery. Our commitment is always to learn lessons from such incidents, and we have, and those lessons have been embedded into our practice. We'd like to have no falls, but occasionally they can't be avoided, and this is due to our patient population. It's important as an organisation, we learn from why that fall has occurred, put actions in place to make sure that our patients remain safe and it doesn't happen again in the future. Reducing pressure ulcers was a priority for us in the last year and I'm pleased to say that we improved greatly in this area. Some of this is a result of education and training, comprehensive risk assessments and the use of specialist equipment. It's really important that we measure our performance against the constitutional standards that we have to deliver just so that people are aware of how well we're doing as an organisation. I am proud to report that we have achieved our key cancer standards and that's reflective of the fact that we've made sure even through the most difficult times within the pandemic our most vulnerable patients still received the surgery and the treatment that they required. The 18 week referral to treatment time target relates to the time taken from a GP referring a patient to when we actually treat them within the hospital. And because we weren't able to undertake a lot of the work that we would ordinarily undertake here, that 18 week period was extended significantly and therefore we were unable to achieve that target. We are seeing significant improvement within that standard as we start to recover all of the activity. In this year, despite the fact we had less patients attending the emergency department, the system moved at a much slower pace because the department had to change the way that it dealt with patients, separating into hot stream for COVID suspected or COVID positive patients, and a cold stream for those who weren't suspected COVID. In addition to that, we also saw that the patients that were attending the emergency department were incredibly sick and therefore they take longer before we can actually transfer them into the hospital or transfer them out to another organisation. As a result of the pandemic, the methods used to allocate resources to NHS organisations changed. We were given a fixed amount of income to try and manage an estimated level of spend. However, as you can imagine, there were exceptional items of expenditure that needed to be incurred. The Trust has had to report a small deficit against that allocated income provided to us. The arrival of COVID-19 highlighted the enormous contribution of NHS and social care staff. The pace of change was unprecedented and we all had to find new ways of working very quickly. It's vital that we look after our workforce and make sure that they are healthy and happy at work and therefore having the right support available for staff when they need it is crucial. Last year the Trust invested in the Wellbeing Hub which is a place where staff can get a whole range of support and facilities covering mental and physical health. Our staff vaccination programme commenced last December and as ever our staff stepped forward not only to protect themselves, but also the patients, their families and their colleagues. We know that having happy and engaged staff deliver excellent patient care. Therefore, it's really important that all staff feel that they have a voice and they can be listened to. In the last year, our staff networks have proved really effective in developing a real inclusive environment so that all our staff feel that they matter. Past year, 
has been the most challenging time I have ever known throughout my career in the NHS. In April 2020, when the COVID pandemic reached the peak of wave one, we thought it could not get any worse. Little did we know what was to come. Let me put that into context for you. This is the graph of the year. You will have heard people in other parts of the country talk of two waves. Here in the Northwest, we have had three, April, November and January. At our busiest point in January 2021, we were caring for 300 COVID positive patients across the Trust, with seven COVID cohort wards and admitting almost a ward of patients every day. Sadly, we lost three members of our STHK family, Sadiq El Housh, Joe Fairclough and Margaret Wayne will be fondly remembered by everyone at the Trust and we will always hold their families in our thoughts and prayers. This is our COVID story. One hospital on Merseyside, there are currently 90 patients being treated. One of the highest infection rates in the UK.
from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your care, your kindness and your courage. I have been in the NHS for over 30 years and Chief Executive at this Trust since 2003. But never before have I experienced the intense challenges this pandemic has brought. I am extremely proud of our team here at STHK. Despite everything they faced during the pandemic, they refused to be beaten. Somehow, they found ways to continue providing high quality and compassionate care, not only to COVID patients, but to all of those who needed us most. I want to take this moment to recognise the hard work, courage and commitment of our wonderful staff over the past 18 months. The COVID pandemic put a spotlight on the NHS like never before. Television, radio, newspapers, social media. And whilst COVID was the story, the focus was very clearly, was the NHS coping? In A&E, they isolate those coming in with symptoms. Neville is one of nearly 90 patients on three COVID wards here. It is a worrying time for all of us. Not only did we cope, we innovated, we transformed, we changed like never before and moved at a pace to care for our patients and our staff achieved some incredible things. We set up the cancer hotline so that patients could directly speak to clinical staff who had the right knowledge and expertise to tell them actually this is something that we need to investigate further and they immediately got into that pathway. That's now been taken up as an exemplar that's actually going to be replicated across the country. The team at St Helens set up the Surgical Cancer Hub, which meant that we could undertake life-saving cancer surgery for our most vulnerable patients in a COVID-secure environment. My name is Peter Kite. I was diagnosed with rectal cancer in late March, just as the COVID uh, pandemic was starting. Within a few weeks, I was on the operating table and that pace was great for me because it made me feel that something was going on to help me. The thought of putting us off for months could be life or death for me long term, so it was really important to me to get in quickly. Being in hospital during the pandemic was strange. I was with people I didn't know uh, for all that period of time. And of course there were no visitors. I had free TV from all that time and that did definitely help. And of course FaceTime is available as well. Because the staff are so good, well humoured and involving you, um, you, you didn't really feel lonely. It was uh, a good experience from that point of view. There were extremely vulnerable patients who still needed to come to hospital and we wanted to make sure that they felt safe to do so. There was lots of planning that had to go on to making sure that we had appropriate one-way systems, people could stay apart. We changed seating areas, we moved desks in offices around so people were more than two metres apart. We never ran out of anything. Our procurement team, along with other colleagues, worked incredibly hard to make sure that our clinical staff and our patients received any equipment that they needed. If that meant personal sacrifices at home, working seven days a week, they did it without asking for anything else. For that, we will always be grateful. We carried on with the capital programme and there were a number of developments and schemes that came to fruition through the year. The biggest of these was Bevan Court, which is a two-storey building. On the ground floor has a frailty assessment unit and on the upper floor has a conventional ward. 
When you think of everything that was happening with the pandemic, included things like women couldn't have the partners with them when they came to appointments, they could only have the birth partner with them during the labour. The maternity unit went above and beyond to make sure they had extra support, loads of information, but also a really good experience. My name is Danielle and my first baby Evan was born in Whiston Hospital in August 2020. The COVID pandemic was totally unpredictable. Nobody knew it was coming. And um, obviously things had to change in order to keep me and my baby safe. And I understood that. It was hard, but you know, it was something that had to be done. And I felt that the staff there managed that really well um, and still enabled me to feel supported and empowered um, and, and look after me and my baby and bring him safely into the world. In four weeks time, I'm gonna have another baby at Whiston Hospital. This time it's been a little bit different in that Matt can come to the appointments with me. The only thing really is that we've had to do COVID tests before we go to appointments. I don't feel nervous, I don't feel have any anxiety around that because I know that the care that I'm going to get from Whiston is gonna be excellent. It was a real example of people across the whole trust pulling together. There was that real motivation to do something to defeat the virus and put all that commitment and work in to make it happen and be so successful. The support we had from clinical colleagues in rolling out the new technology has been absolutely phenomenal. Despite everything they had to do, they still found time to work with my team and really helped us to make a massive difference in how we actually start to deliver care digitally. One of the best things about last year was our big thank you week where we literally wanted to say thank you to each and every member of staff. Whether they were frontline or they were working from home or they were office based, it was important that everybody was thanked. And of course, we mustn't forget our 5,000 hoodies that we gave out to all of our staff. As the year drew to a close, we were very lucky to be awarded funding from the NHS charities together and Captain Sir Tom Moore, which allowed us to create a remembrance garden, which we have called the Rainbow Garden. It is a quiet, reflective space and can be used by patients, staff and visitors alike. We think it's beautiful and we're incredibly proud of it. There is still some way to go and many challenges ahead, but I have no doubt that we can face them together with the same determined spirit that has brought us this far. Covid is still a real and present danger and whilst we continue to operate within the confines of the pandemic, our focus for the coming year is also on those patients who require our immediate care. To do that we need to use all the capacity that is available and to work as smartly as we can. As you've just seen, we have successfully opened Bevan Court, our new frailty unit, which has helped to take some pressure off the emergency department. In the months ahead, we will be extending the children's A&E department. And we are also looking at options to increase the number of operating theatres at Whiston Hospital. You may also be aware that we have just reached an agreement to work with Southport and Ormskirk Hospital Trust enabling us to deliver outstanding care to an even bigger population. To this end, we have agreed a number of priorities for the year ahead. We will support the health and wellbeing of all our staff as they continue through the ongoing pandemic. We will restore and recover our elective activity, ensuring we treat our most clinically urgent patients first. We will improve information given to patients about their care in hospital 
We will uphold our high quality standards with a specific focus on maintaining our excellent levels of infection prevention and reducing falls. And we will continue to develop alternatives to face-to-face -face outpatient appointments by increasing the use of technology where suitable for patients. These priorities underpin this year's trust objectives. As always, our overarching aim remains the same, to deliver five-star patient care. Now, we will move on to the written questions we have received. We have received three written questions from members of the public. Question one is about A&E waiting times. The member of the public asked why some patients are waiting over 10 hours to be seen in the department. Our response is, as with all hospitals across the country, we have been experiencing extremely high levels of attendances to the A&E department. Whiston Hospital's A&E department remains the busiest in Cheshire and Merseyside, and activity levels, even during the summer months, have far exceeded that which we would normally see, even at the peak of winter. Unfortunately, this can lead to unavoidable delays for those attending with less serious conditions, with patients treated in order of clinical priority. Our staff are working extremely hard to see and treat patients in a safe and timely manner. Question 2 is regarding the increased use of agency staff on wards. The gentleman's friend was a patient in Whiston recently and was told that staff morale was low due to current pressures. Our response is... The Trust and its staff have experienced a long period of extreme pressure, both during the pandemic and as a result of unprecedented levels of emergency activity in its aftermath. It has been a difficult period for everyone working across the NHS and our staff continue to work tirelessly, caring for all of our patients. The health and well-being of our staff has been one of our top priorities throughout the pandemic and will remain so going forward. To assist staff through this difficult period, within the Trust there is a wealth of wellbeing services available. Our Staff Wellbeing Hub gives direct access to everything from counselling and physiotherapy services to assistance with personal bereavement or cultural and spiritual needs. As with the rest of the population, it has been necessary for staff to isolate through periods of illness or when in contact with positive COVID-19 cases in the community. This has had an unavoidable impact on staff absence levels and in order to continue to provide critical services, it has been necessary to increase the number of agency staff used in some areas. As levels of infection rates reduce in the community, we anticipate the requirement for agency staff will decrease. Question 3 asked how the Trust is managing the backlog of operations that had to be cancelled at the beginning of the pandemic. Our response is, despite the unprecedented pressures of the pandemic, the Trust was able to continue with all urgent elective activity and cancer care throughout. This meant that those with the most serious conditions continued to receive the care they needed in a safe and timely manner, with the Trust currently meeting both the 31-day and 62-day cancer treatment targets. Whilst non-urgent elective activity was unfortunately suspended during the pandemic, the Trust was one of the first organisations regionally to recommence elective operations following the peak of the pandemic. Between April and August of this year, STHK has achieved 93% of pre-COVID-19 activity levels whilst continuing to maintain effective infection prevention and control measures across all its sites. The Trust continues to treat elective patients in order of clinical priority. Thank you for your questions. And that concludes this year's annual general meeting. The Trust's annual report and accounts will be published by the 30th of September and available to view on the Trust website. If you require a hard copy or would like to request these documents in a different language 
or easy to read version, please email communications at sthk.nhs.uk. The past year has been the most challenging the Trust has ever experienced. But despite the extremely difficult circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, providing the best care and treatment for all our patients has remained our number one priority. And I would like to add my own personal thank you to all our staff and partner organisations for all that they have done and continued to do. I cannot end this review of the year without also mentioning the incredible support we have received from our local community. Thank you to you all for your kindness, encouragement and support for our staff. I sincerely hope we can do this in person next year. Until next time, stay safe.